gentlemen, whether you like it or not, Hedvig! Sheltered and soon will be sheltering some poor, brave, unfortunate souls. 
Mostly teachers, I hear. <laughs> Any teachers in the house tonight? Uh, I want you to know that I can sympathize with you. Because I too know how it feels to have a small prick fuck you in the ass. <laughs> Speaking of teachers, did anyone here uh, go listen to Mrs. Obama speak yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't the only first lady in town. <sighs> How was she? She was great. Were there enough seats? Yes. Oh, good. Took them damn long enough, didn't it? Did you know that Mr. Obama was in town too? No. Neither did she. <laughs> you know what they say, once you go black, you lose your gag reflex. <laughs> oh, that president's got it packing. Uh, once again, I am so happy you could join me here this evening for my unlimited Kansas run. And when it comes to huge openings, a lot of people think of me. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, I see a couple of true fans in the house tonight. Right here. Well, at first I thought these people were stalkers, but I realized they weren't that flattering. Ah, <laughs> uh, I called them my roadheads. Guess how they got that name? Uh, oh, you have your phone out. Would you like to take a selfie? Yeah. Let's take a selfie then. Okay, come on. Come here. Gather around. Hmm. Anyone else have a cell phone? Would they care for a selfie? Oh, in the back. That's where most people like it, right? Uh, oh, bomb it. Bomb it hard, girl. Hmm, <laughs> that was a pretty one. Yes. There's much worse pictures of me on the internet than that. Believe me! Google anything with my name in it. Something dirty will pop up. You know what I mean. Uh, you know. Uh, like I said, a few of you know me. Uh, know of me. Uh, many of you have only recently become aware. Yeah, I took a... Character assassination attempt to make you all finally pay attention, but now you're interested, huh? Intrigued, even? Who is this Hedwig, and why haven't we heard of her before, Bob? <laughs> well, that's a question that I've been asking myself for years, ladies and gentlemen. How did some slip of a girly boy from communist East Berlin become the internationally ignored song stylist, <laughs> barely standing before you? That's what I want to talk about tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Told you there's worse pictures of me on the internet. I don't want to talk about tragedy or calamity or my relationship with a certain well-known rock icon, Tommy Gnosis. Even though he's probably speaking of me right now. You see, coincidentally, Tommy is previewing his tour of Atoma tonight, right across the river at the Kansas Expo Center. Listen, listen, I want to thank the way that Hannah just said. The incredible loyalty in the face of a lot of lies. And that someone is you, my fans. And together, no one's going to tear us down. Enemies and... <laughs> I wrote every song on that album. Okay, the tabloids did, did get it right, though. He was driving. He was on blow. He was... Getting blown by yours truly. <laughs> and he did swerve in that oncoming short bus full of deaf children. It's okay, one survived. Now blind. <sighs> I taught him everything he knows and has apparently forgotten about rock and roll. And he barely even mentions my name on that giant sucking sound Larry King calls the show, which I'm assuming you all have seen because if you hadn't, I would be singing to the bartender right now and my agent Phyllis would... Phyllis, are you in the house tonight? Hmm? You here? You behind the drum set? No, you still have your pants on. <laughs> of course, why would she be here? She's just my fucking agent. <laughs> I... I'm so sorry, I'm just wide open tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the road is my home. My home, the road. And when I think of all the people I have come upon in my travels, I have to think of all the people who have come upon me. 
the geography of human contact, the triangulation of a pair of eyes on my face, the longitude and latitude of a pair of hands on my body. These are the only clues I have to my place in the world, to who I really am, to who is Mystery Woman. I laugh because I will cry if I don't. Ooh, recently, though, I discovered my first diary, ages two through six, fully illustrated. <laughs> and I realized that many people touched me on my way to the stage tonight. But who can I say has touched me the most? Was it my father, the American GI, who left before I was old enough to speak my first words? Daddy, when I grow up, I'm going to kill you. I was a precocious child. <laughs> Perhaps it was my communist East Berlin mother. No, no, when she tried to touch me, it was usually by accident, reaching for a can of beans on the table or something like that. Ooh, I remember one night, though, I was watching Jesus Christ Superstar on American Forces television. I turned to my mother and I said, Jesus said the darndest things, and she slapped me. Don't ever speak that name to me again. But he died for our sins. So did Hitler. <laughs> what? Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Better to be powerless, my son. Well, she got your wish when the wall went up. You see, we were already living on the east side of the wall, so the communists gave my mother a job teaching sculpture to limbless children. <laughs> Socialism. God rest its soul. Most of my time, though, was spent listening to American Forces Radio. You see, our puppet was so small, Mother had me play in the oven. Pretend this is an oven. It wasn't in the budget. <sighs> Late at night, I would rest my head on the top rack of the oven and listen to the voices of the American masters, Tony Tennille, Anne Murray, Debbie Boone, and did you know Anne Murray was actually a Canadian working in the American idiom? <laughs> and then there were the crypto homo rockers Lou Reed, Iggy Pop, David Bowie, who was actually an idiom working in both America and Canada. <laughs> Those artists left as deep an impression on me as that oven rack did on my face. To be a young American in muskrat love, soft as an easy chair, not even the chair. Have I said, have I never been mellow? Have I never even tried? And the color girls sing. And I'd sing along. But never with the melody. How could I do it better than Tony or Lou? Once, I couldn't resist. If it's wrong, why does it feel so right? And Mother threw a tomato at my head. But I was quite content singing gentle backup harmonies in my oven. While Mother sculpted in the shower. When the hour grew late, Mother would yell from the bathroom, Well. That's me! I turned from the kitchen and yelled back, Well, that's me too, I guess. We would brush our teeth and wash our feet and lay down on the small, narrow pallet that we shared since Daddy left. Like two pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that don't quite fit, but are jammed together anyway and left behind on the table by some dangerous shut-in with too much time I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm completely dilated right now. <laughs> I'd like to share with you, though, a bedtime story that my mother once whispered to me in the dark and later attracted. When the earth was still flat and the clouds made of fire and the mountains stretched up to the sky, sometimes Thanks. 
to snore. But I had to go someplace I could think. So I crept back into the kitchen and put my head in the oven. 
I was very Sylvia Plath back then. <laughs> it is clear to me that I must find my other half. But is it a he or a she? Could it be daddy? No, no, he went away. Could it be my mother? <laughs> Suddenly I was very afraid to go back to bed. What does this person look like? Identical to me or somehow complimentary? Did this person get the looks, the luck, the love? Were we really separated forcibly or did he just run off with the good stuff? Or did I? Will this person embarrass me? And what about sex? Is that how we put ourselves together again? Is that what daddy was trying to do when he... Or can two people really become one again? And if it happens on the Autobahn, can we still use the diamond lens? Uh, practical questions of wholeness, ladies and gentlemen, of completion. Think of it. I thought of it. I thought of the power. The gods would be terrified! Jesus! <laughs> oh, uh, uh, the magnifying side. Mm, very clever, Yitzhak. Very passive-aggressive. <laughs> Yitzhak, look, immigration! <laughs> If you behave yourself, I'll let you shake my ass later. <laughs> Don't laugh, it's not that hairy. Thank you. Uh, how's my hair tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you, thank you. Good uh, trouble in the West Wing. Oh no, these are actually my lungs, did you know that? My Aquanet lungs, they kick in on the high notes. Okay, let's be serious for a moment. I was just telling Yitzhak the other day how nervous I was about this evening. Would I still be able to fit in that old Sergio Valenti? I mean, there was no time to diet. So I had my heart removed and suddenly I was a perfect size six. I am sorry you had to see that, ladies and gentlemen. You see, when I first met Yitzhak, he wanted to be a model. Yeah, foot model. <laughs> okay, enough about him. Let's get on with the show. Yes. yes? Did someone just say my name? <laughs> I swear I heard my name being called just now. Bitch! I realized there was only one person who had ever really been there for me in my life. And that person was me. It was the accident with the cry for help. I was yelling, help to me. Well, what about me? If it weren't for me, he wouldn't have got all that attention and spoke to that short person. Okay, okay. Let's take a moment here against the advice of my lawyers. I had just finished a late night transaction in the meatpacking district. <laughs> take that as you will. But we're talking about the newly Tony renovated meatpacking district. You've heard of Soho and Noto. Local reference. I know things. <laughs> well, this, this is Mipa. I'm standing on 14th Street, the very boulevard of Mipa, when a limo pulls up. I step inside, naturally mistaking it for my own. I can smell your thoughts from here. Take a thought shower. <laughs> I step into the limo, and there sits Tommy Gnosis. We were both astonished. We made that home alone face, the whole. <laughs> so we drop the driver off and start driving up and down the island doing drugs and catching up. We spoke of the disappointing sales of his second album, the one he wrote without me. We spoke of his loneliness, how I reminded him of happier days. Well, I just couldn't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Well, you know the rest. 
So needless to say, when the story broke, Tommy's people offered me a small fortune to keep all this to myself, as if I'd accept their filthy lucre, as if selling the story of someone else's tragedy was my only means of support, as if I hadn't already launched my new fragrance, Atrocity by Hedwig. <laughs> it's made for a guy to wear, or a woman, or a freak. <laughs> Ooh, good story. One day, in the late mid-80s, I'm in my early late 20s. I had just been dismissed from university after delivering a brilliant lecture on the aggressive influence of German philosophy on rock and roll, titled, You Can't Always Get What You Want. He didn't get that the first time he heard it. I'm 26 years old. My academic career is over. I've never kissed a boy, and I'm still sleeping with mom. It is clear that my search for my other half on this side of the wall has proven futile. But perhaps he could be on the other side. But to how to get over, people die trying. These were the thoughts flooding my tiny head on the day that I was sunning myself in an old bomb crater I had discovered nearby the wall. I am naked, of course. Face down on a piece of broken church, inhaling a fragrant westerly breeze. The new McDonald's had just opened up on the west side of the wall. <laughs> God, I deserved a break today. I always have the unhappy meal. I am hot, but I feel a sudden chill. I look over my shoulder, and there's a head-shaped shadow resting on the pillow of my ass. Girl, I sure don't mean to annoy you. My name is Sergeant Luther Robinson. I turn my body to face him. My name's Hansel. <laughs> he is silent for a moment as he looks at my little bishop in a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> Hansel, well, you must like candy. Come on, join in. Hansel, well, you <coughs> must like candy. Oh, I like candy, <laughs> version. Out of his pocket comes a strange looking American plastic bag that says gummy bears on it. Gummy bears. I reach inside and I select a single clear bear. It's the biggest I've ever seen. And the taste is completely different from a gummy bear, but somehow familiar. It's softer than a gummy bear, <laughs> and sweeter too. His little gummy body stretching over the rack of my molars. Wow, I feel so optimistic. <laughs> he pours me a handful, his eyes heavy with an unfamiliar desire. Could it be the desire to please me? I suddenly recognize the taste in my mouth. It's the taste of power. It's not bad. Tiny faces pressed against clear plastic. <laughs> Panting faces of every imaginable race, color, and non Aryan origin fogging up the back like the windows of the Polish bathhouse. It's only a shower. Absolute power. I push Luther away and stumble back towards less bland or complicated infections, leaving in my trail a wake of rainbow carnage. <laughs> Dramatic. <laughs> The next day, Hansel follows the trail back, and on his way he finds three Milky Ways, a roll of Necker wafers, oh, some Pop Rocks, and a giant size sugar daddy named Luther. <laughs>
sugar in his bowl. I lay out fine shine on the linen and polish up the chrome. If you've got some sugar for me, sugar daddy, bring it home. Blackstrap molasses, you're my orange blossom honey bear. Sugar daddy's in the house tonight. I wonder what you boys taste like. When honeybees go shopping, it's something to be seen. Mm, you're so sweet, you give me a cavity, sugar. They swarm the wildflowers and get nectar for the queen. Honey, I bet you can fill that cavity. I was down on my knees. <sighs> One evening, I invite Luther over for dinner. Me, the real me, the me I used to be. <laughs> After dessert, Luther produces a ring, an application for American citizenship, and a wig. He loves me, mother. He wants to marry me and get me the hell out of here. I put the wig on my head, it's a hideous beige shag. <laughs> mother, 
Do you think this is so crazy it just might work? Her face might have been a photograph it was so still. After what felt like a lifetime, probably hers, she reaches out her hand and adjusts the wig. Get me my passport and my camera. Don't you think? Bring me my passport and my camera, Hansel. I know a certain party. <laughs> yeah, the party she'd be having after I left. It's a simple cut and paste job. We'll switch the photographs and you can use my head Schmidt. Not so simple, lady. It's not so simple, ladies. But baby, you know I love you. I'm always thinking of you. But I gotta marry you here in East Berlin. And that means a full physical examination. Well, they'll see right away that. <laughs> Baby, to move on, you got to leave a little something behind. Am I right, Mrs. Smith? I always thought so, either. Hansel, in order to be free, one must give up a part of oneself. And I know just the doctor to take it. Don't move. November 8, 1988, in the tiny registrar's office overlooking the wall, Herr Hansel Schmidt becomes Mrs. Hedwig Robinson. He loves me, Mother, and by the time I get to Phoenix, love will keep us together. Cause I'm just an embryo with a long, long way to go. And I know too much to turn back in. <laughs> <laughs> November 8th, 1989, Junction City, Kansas. 
I sit alone in my trailer and on bootleg cable watch the wall come down. Divorced, penniless, a woman. I suddenly miss my mother and I think back to all the lessons that she taught me as a child, such as women cross at the ankles and whores cross at the knees. <laughs> <laughs> it's always more comfortable this way. I consider calling Berlin, but remember with envy her recent escape to sunny Yugoslavia. Perhaps Luther would be back. No, no, he was, he was never the one. Never the missing half. I turn and I catch myself in a mirror. And for the first time, fully realize the horror hunkering down on my head. That same beige carpet ribbon that Luther presented to me a year ago to cover my receding. Receding? I'm receding. I tear the ring from my scalp and hurl across the room into a pile of unopened anniversary presents. And there it lies, feigning shock. My own personal hair system. My own personal hello. My Hedvig. On nights like this, when the world's a bit amiss, and the lights go down, Across the trailer park I get down Feel high Feel on the verge of going mad And it's time to punch the clock I put on some makeup Turn on the tape deck Until I head home and I turn back to myself.
match, I believe we have our single. I'm fearing feeling all fringy now. Ready to bang. Uh, one moment, please. Got to get a drink from the bar. Get hot and sweaty getting naked in front of a bunch of strangers. Oh, it's all ready for me. They're much better than the last two bartenders. Guess what I had to do with them? Pay them. You guys are nervous. And a crazy straw for free. Gotta suck a little bit hard on these things, though. Mm. Mm, lemon shandy make me pucker, baby. Ooh. Oh, round of applause for the angry itch, ladies and gentlemen, right? Mm. So good. Do you like that? The shower on you? It's a rock and roll gesture. Mm. You know, that was more of a heavy metal gesture, wasn't it? You want to see a punk rock gesture? <laughs> it's the direction of the aggression that defines it. You want to see a pop princess gesture? <laughs> Who knows where that aggression's going? <clears throat> oh, oh, hold on, one moment. You're right, it's, uh, it's getting a bit chilly in here. A little bit nippy. Let me introduce you to the Angry Inch, ladies and gentlemen. Who on base we have Yasik. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know he used to play for the Croatian version of Seinfeld? <laughs> Siegfeld. <laughs> on drums we have Schlotko.
discussed this. We met during my great Croatian tour of the late mid-90s. Phyllis thought he would make a great opening act. He was the most famous drag queen in Zagreb. He was billed as the last Jewess in the Balkans. And he sang something from Yento under the name Crystal Nacht. <laughs> you laughed at that one. And he was good. Well, he was very good. You see, his applause drowned out my introduction. And I have a fucking loud introduction. <laughs> and I refuse to go on. After the show, though, he came up to me and begged me to take him with me. My face might have been my mother's. It was so still. I said, Yitzhak, to move on, one must leave a small part of oneself behind. I will marry you on the condition that the wig never touches your head again. He agreed, and we've been inseparable ever since, and we will continue to be. Right, Yitzhak? Pookie bear. It's up. It's up. Immigration! Barbara Streisand! <laughs> well, fun, go back to your home. And please take a tic tac, holy shit. <laughs> Don't drink my beer, it's my beer. It has the straw in it, you suck on your can. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I showed up. I do hope you're becoming huge fans of Henry because I'm becoming a huge hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy? Tommy, are you finally getting around to me? Hmm? Me, 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 me. One day the school trailer trash kid put on some of his mom's highlighter, grabbed his beat up JC Penny guitar, and called himself Tommy Nelson. Tommy, can you hear me? From this milkless tit, you suck the very business we call show. <laughs> okay. Okay, you want to hear about Tommy Gnosis? Yeah. Yeah? I'll tell you about Tommy Gnosis. Tommy and... Get this fucking thing off of me. Please. I don't... She is... Thank you. Thank you. Don't put it on though, it's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy and I met back after my divorce. After my divorce, I just barely scraped by with babysitting gigs and odd jobs. Mostly the jobs we call bro. <laughs> I lost my job at the base PX and I lost my gag reflex. You do the math. <laughs> Sucked a lot of dick. I sat for the baby of General Speck, the commander of the nearby army fort. His other son is the artist formerly known as my butt boy. Yes, that's right. Tommy Speck. Tommy Speck was a 17-year-old, full-eyed, pockmarked, Dungeons and Dragons obsessed, Jesus freak, with a fish on his truck. And I found him oh, incredibly hot. <laughs> Perhaps it was his disdain for authority or his struggle with organized religion. <laughs> Once I caught him punishing the bishop. <laughs> Reference from earlier. <laughs> he was in the bathroom with the door wide open, clearly waiting for me, so I went inside and I finished his graces off. <laughs> and dropped a flyer on the bath mat and I said, Tommy, I'm performing a small set tomorrow at Dr. Seattle's Coffee and Edema Bar. Perhaps I'll see you there. I had recently returned to my first love of music. <laughs> Choo! A flat! I was wrong! <laughs> Thanks for embarrassing me, Krista. I have no passport, you know that, right? Shut up, then. <laughs> I had recently returned to my first love of music. I tried singing once back in Berlin. After the show, they threw tomatoes at me. After that, I had a nice salad. Toss my salad, Hedwig! <laughs> you need a lot of ranch dressing on that salad. <laughs> so I bought a cheap electric piano and I found a group of Korean sergeant's wives who churned down to me in rhythm section. We played the hits of the day under the name The Angry Inch. That night, the crowd was small, but also That was a song 
by Mr. Kurt Cobain. Now that kid's got a future, huh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Quay Yi on guitar, give it up, Quay Yi! Looks like we have a celebrity with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Over by the sweet and low, Tommy Speck, the general son! Round of applause for him, please. Thank you. Okay? He's more than I got, honey. Be grateful. Oh, he's a little embarrassed. To be honest, though, I'm a little nervous myself. You see, this is the first song I've ever written. And it's written for a guy to sing. We're talking to Phil Collins' people. The Shroud of Heaven! <laughs> Should hang this up in a museum. Hedvig selfie. <laughs> the next day, I'm putting the little speck baby to bed when Tommy appears in the doorway with a very expensive looking electric guitar. Gershaw, that song? My dad bought me this guitar to apologize for being such a pathetic little dictator. <laughs> Do you want to come up to my room? So he took me to the attic and played me songs. Classics. The bands were all new to me. And I was informed Boston 
Kansas, Asia, America, Europe. I put my hands on the strings. Travel exhausts me. <laughs> <laughs> Free from Hedwig. I told him my story. His face might have been a Yes album cover, it was so still. <laughs> have you accepted Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as your personal Lord and Savior? I told him I was familiar with our Lord, loved his work. <laughs> you know, what he was trying to save us from was his fucking father. I mean, what kind of God creates Adam in his image and then pulls Eve out of him to keep him company and then tells him not to eat from the tree of knowledge? He was so micromanaging. And so was Adam. But Eve, Eve just wanted to know shit. <laughs> so she took a bite of the apple, learned what was good, what was evil, and gave it to Adam to eat from, so he would know because they were in love, and that was good they now knew. Edwin, will you give me the apple? The words spilling from those lips in his eyes. His eyes were clear cylinders of surprising depth and emptiness. Only a few bluish puddles sloshed around inside. The same blue as my eyes. At the time, Tommy's performance options were limited to the occasional guitar mass. So I initiated a six-month curriculum of rock and roll history, lyrics, grooming, and vocal training. My patented oven technique. <laughs> for his graduation, I gave him his name. Tommy Gnosis, the Greek word for knowledge. We collaborated, and songs exploded out of us. He sang harmony for me at Dr. Espresso's. Teenage girls started showing up. Slapped every single one that did that. <laughs> We wrote a few duets, standing room only, and then the sizzler called. Within three months, we were outgrossing monster trucks in Wichita. And with that kind of money coming in, I could give up all my jobs, especially the ones called Blow, <laughs> and devote myself entirely to our career. And we were very happy. One day, I'm curled up in my trailer, with my usual late afternoon constitutional brain alcohol in Britain, I like to be good to myself. When suddenly Tommy appears in the doorway in tears, Honey, what is it? My mom, dad, my fucking parents. I hold him as I've never been held. But as usual, he squirms and spins me around and clutches my spine to his chest. I'm fully aware that in all the months we've been together, we've never kissed. In fact, he has maintained quite a mere ignorance of the front of me. Honey, how about you work on that new song, The Hint, while I finish shaving your eyebrows? Look what you've done. Ah, oh, fuck. Suddenly, another song bursts in from the trailer next door. This song's been on a loop for three days. Tommy looks up at me through new lenses, one blue and one pink. What do you think, Hedwig? Does, does love last forever? No, but the song sure does. Come on, don't knock a multi-platinum single. God, I wish I had those notes. Then, then move your lips and I'll sing them for you, honey, from some shadowy corner of the stage. Like Mick Jagger's backup singers. 
to laugh at the professional reference, and I returned to his brows. Seriously though, Tom, yes, I believe love is immortal. Look what you've done. God damn it! How is it immortal? Perhaps because love creates something that wasn't there before. What? Like procreation? Yes, but not only. What? Like recreation? <laughs> he grabs my ass and laughs. I don't. Perhaps just creation. Don't move. I paint a bold silver cross on his forehead. Honey, have you thought about a B flat after that B? Look what you've done. And I Tommy slowly rises and draws the curtains that are attached to the top and bottom. He reaches out his hand and I take it. I realize how well his hollow spice nail color matches my own dusty menses. He spins me around and rubs his pelvis into the small of my back. Look what you've done. You've made me whole. Before I met you, I was the song. Now, I'm the video. Look what I've done. I've made you whole. You know that you were just a ham. Then came me, the dull pineapple rings. <laughs> He laughs, and I am filled with an ancient clarity. He's the one. No blood on his face, and no blood in my eyes. He's the one. The one who was taken. The one who left. The twin, born by a fission. He'll die in fusion. Our fusion. Cold fusion, unlimited power, unlimited knowledge, the secrets we must hold, the memories that we share, the words to complete the sentence that I began, I am. My eyes fill with muddy, mabling tears. <laughs> oh, Hedwig. Oh, God. Eve was still inside Adam. They were in paradise. She was separated from him, and that's when paradise was lost. She enters him again. Paradise will be regained. However you want it, honey, just kiss me while we do it. I grab his hand and put it between my... What is that? It's what I have to work with. My mom's probably Sissy wondering where I... Girly, lispy boy, what are you so afraid of? I love you. I love
nice over here. Out of the spotlight. Singing harmony from some shadowy corner of the stage. You and me singing together in our own little oven. A couple of survivors, the German and the Jew. Think of the cemetery. Think of the publicity. Think of the power. The gods would be terrified. side of a town ripped into Good stuff. 